So this thing right here might seem like a torture instrument when you're first learning to dive and you're being asked to learn your dive tables during your e-learning or in the classroom with your instructor. Well, our goal is to try and make the RDP easy peasy. Welcome to Everything Scuba. Hey guys, welcome back to Everything Scuba. I am Lyle. This is part three of our RDP series that we've put together for new divers or divers who are struggling to learn their RDP. You're gonna be asked lots of questions during your open water certification written exams all about the RDP and need to know that theory. And we're trying to make this as easy as possible for you. In the next five minutes or less, we are going to cover two basic areas, adjusted non-decompression limit or ANDL and minimum surface interval. How do we calculate that minimum surface interval? These are both things that you are generally going to be asked about when you take the RDP section of your exam. So let's get to it. As I talked about in previous episodes, I like to think about our body as a bank or a reservoir for nitrogen as we dive. Our body is going to load on uh, some of that nitrogen. And so here I've got three divers, A, K, and F group divers. The A diver, we're going to think of this like an empty vessel just waiting to take on nitrogen. Yes, I know we do carry around nitrogen even at sea level, but we're going to assume that we're just an empty vessel ready to take on the nitrogen. Then we go for a dive. We become a K diver at the end of that dive. We have loaded some of that nitrogen into our tissues and we call that residual nitrogen time. We're going to take a surface interval, some time out of the water, and during that surface interval, we are going to degas. We're going to give off some of that nitrogen. So our residual nitrogen time decreases. So it's degassing represented by the blue and then some residual nitrogen time, which is less than a K diver, that's why we become an F diver. Your adjusted non-decompression limit is how much time in minutes do you have from the top of your residual nitrogen time all the way to the top of your head. How much additional time would you have to reload? So let's do an example to show you how that works. So this is an example of a question that you might be asked during your open water examinations. We have two divers. They make their first dive to 80 feet or 24 meters for 25 minutes. When we do the calculation on the RDP, we find 80 feet, we're gonna go down and find 25 minutes, and they come out of the water as an N diver, pressure group N. They're going to take a 30 minute surface interval, so we're gonna find the N diver, we're gonna kinda cross, we're gonna find 30 minutes, come down, and we're now an I diver. We breathed off some of that gas and we changed our pressure group. On the second dive, those same two divers, they wanna make a second dive to 60 feet or 18 meters, and they wanna be down there for the longest possible time that they can without having to decompress back to the surface. And we call that, what is their adjusted non-decompression limit? As we just talked about, it's called adjusted because we also have to take into account the residual nitrogen time that they have from their first dive. So let's figure this out. Again, there are two ways that we can do this. We can use the front side or the back side of the table. Let's go to table three. With table three, along the top, we have the pressure group at the end of the surface interval, indicated by all these letters. Then we have the depth of the subsequent dive that we want to make. We have white boxes and we have blue boxes. On our last episode, we talked about the white boxes. This indicates the residual nitrogen time that this diver has from his previous dive. The blue boxes, think of those as if you're underwater. It's blue, let's be underwater. So this blue box indicates our adjusted non-decompression limit. And so if we wanna be an eye diver, diving to 60 feet or 18 meters, we're going to find the eye diver and 60 feet, and where do those two coincide? Right here. And so my adjusted non-decompression limit would be 30 minutes. So how does my adjusted non-decompression limit compare to me as if I were an A diver with zero residual nitrogen time? So an A diver who took a 60 foot dive or 18 meter dive, his non-decompression limit is 55 minutes. What is the difference between 55 minutes and 30 minutes? It's 25 minutes. So if I were to look up an, a, an I diver who took a 60 foot dive, and we look on the table, we find I, and we go to 60 feet, it shows me 25, which is the equivalent of my residual nitrogen time. So your residual nitrogen time plus your adjusted non-decompression limit is going to be the equivalent of what the total no decompression limit is for that particular depth. And again, table three can help confirm this for us. 
If we find that eye diver and we come down to the 60 foot dive, the white box here, 25 minutes is his residual nitrogen time and the adjusted non-decompression limit is 30 minutes. So both of those boxes tallied together are the equivalent of a non-decompression limit for an A group diver. Now that you understand adjusted non-decompression limits, let's talk about minimum surface intervals because you are going to get questions on your final exam to figure out what a minimum surface interval would be between two particular dives. So let's do an example to show you how that works. So in this example, you're being asked to figure out two divers want to make two dives. The first is to 60 feet or 18 meters for 40 minutes. The second dive, they want to make a dive to 50 feet or 15 meters and they want to be there for 40 minutes. So how do we calculate this? So first, let's take a look at the first dive. We're a group A diver, we're going to dive to 60 feet and we're going for 40 minutes. So 60 all the way to 40, there is no 40, we're going to round up to 42. So we come out of the water as a Q diver. We don't need to worry about what our pressure group here is. We need to worry about what our pressure group here is. We need to have the least amount of residual nitrogen time to allow us to have an adjusted no decompression limit of 40 minutes. Let's take a look at table three to figure that out. So table three, we are concentrated on the blue lines here. That is the adjusted no decompression limits. Remember blue, we're underwater. So uh, we're going to take a dive 50 feet for 40 minutes. We come down to the 50 and we're going to work our way along this adjusted no decompression limit line until we find 40. There is no 40, there's a 39 and a 42. We're going to round up and so now that's an L diver. So we know before we get in the water we need to be an L diver. We need to have that amount of residual nitrogen time to allow us to be an L pressure group diver. So how do we figure out what this surface interval needs to be to change us from a Q to an L diver? Well, let's look at that. So we've flipped our RDP back over and now we're concentrated on table two, the surface interval table. We know that when we got out of the water, we are a Q diver. This is the start of the surface interval. We know that at the end of the surface interval, we need to be an L diver to allow us to make a 50 foot dive for 40 minutes. So let's find where Q and L intersect because along the bottom, this is the ending pressure group. So Q to L right here, and we've got a box that says 21 to 25 minutes. We want the minimum surface interval, so we're going to choose 21 minutes. That is how we calculate what the minimum amount of time that we have to be out of the water to make a subsequent dive to a specific depth for a specific amount of time is. Josh and I are very committed to helping our students pass their final certification written exams and we're very committed to helping you do the same things. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a little contest. We are going to pose multiple questions all about the RDP table and we're going to offer up some of the merchandise that we have on our website. We got t-shirts, we got water bottles, we got iPhone and Android cases. So we want to have several of our subscribers have the chance to win some of the Everything School merchandise by participating in that contest. So click the link down below, go check it out.